Okay, very good morning. It is Friday 21st of February, so I hope everyone is well and I've got good news for you. Sam is back and going to be back on the microphone, so uh, I will stick to myself just going over the news headlines in general fundamental view for the session ahead and then I will have Sam come on and he can look at some of the uh, the charts more technically for this morning but as per usual let's just take a look at the general vibe at the European UK open sentiment a little bit dented from overnight obviously we had uh, a bit of a downtick in US equities yesterday uh, at around the European cash close kind of time um, some people have just been talking to the, the analyst desk about that and they were talking about some suggestion of rotation plays a few different reasons going around obviously the virus a uh, bit of retracement consolidation given the push-up we've had this week in uh, in equity so not one specific kind of headline bumping things down but as I'm going to discuss I do think it's going to be quite an interesting end to the week um, for for kind of two reasons and I'll get into that in more detail but as you can see then gold remains elevated given the kind of gradual uh, grind lower in equity index futures seen overnight so the DAX is already at session lows down over a hundred this morning uh, and gold continues that acceleration and so we're trading up at around the R2 already this morning up at around 1638 I know people thought I was going slightly bonkers yesterday looking on the monthly charts back looking at 1650 1700 but you know this is what I mean it doesn't gold is an asset that's very unique in a way and once there starts to become this um, kind of flight to quality bid there's kind of no stopping it particularly when you know it's multi-year highs in which we'd be trading so the US 10 year is already up 11 and a half ticks and that's a pretty impressive move for this time in the morning so the the t-note following suit and probably now going to find if anything a little bit of a floor of support around that r1 that did act very early in the european entrance as a bit of resistance but we've managed to just break above there as a little bit more weight has come in through the cash equity open here uh, in mainland europe uh, fx markets not quite as busy as some of those other assets but dollar index currently flat uh, obviously the euro is still hovering around that key 108 level uh, and cable there's some key data coming out and the S1 does coincide here exactly to the tick with that uh, the bottom end of that downward move that we had uh, yesterday afternoon uh, to well let me that's the S&P excuse me let me just quickly shift over this chart just so I'm talking about the right product uh, so with cable um, yeah we're just going to keep an eye on the low that kind of double bottom from yesterday late morning early afternoon low that we had uh, if we were to push through down through pivot obviously data points coming out thick and fast throughout the morning will be quite key to whether or that that materializes so quick look at then uh, at the headlines because there is economic data of importance coming out throughout this morning uh, and that is the flash february service and manufacturing pmis the french numbers coming out in about 10 minutes Germany at 8.30. These will be potentially market moving, so uh, we'll try and wrap that into this briefing. Uh, but this is the kind of headline you're seeing this morning, and I would say this is a little bit of a shift towards the point of it becoming a little bit more of a rethink for markets, particularly as we've said at these elevated levels in equities. Uh, this is because now people are looking at the rate of how the um, epidemic is spreading and multiplying outside of mainland China. Now, if we just have a look here at the the kind of uh, the live monitor by the John Johns Hopkins Institute, you can see then uh, that at the moment numbers outside of China remain relatively small. You can see the total number of cases here on the left hand side. Um, out of the 2,247 deaths, only 11 so far have occurred outside of mainland China so that number is very small the World Health Organization still says the situation is manageable but warns that if countries don't take the situation more seriously the spread will become a wider global threat and hence then a pandemic in terms of the classification so the thing that you've seen here is the first step towards that which is more confirmed cases happening in other geographic regions particularly South Korea and Japan within that region and so this is the kind of next evolution of which I think markets could be a little bit dented from sentiment and certainly I think that's what's uh, a, a part of this risk off move we're seeing this morning but actually for me I think this was a really interesting headline this came out 
um, late yesterday. And it was the US government expects China to honor its commitments to buy more US goods under a trade deal signed by the two countries. Uh, despite the fast-growing coronavirus outbreak, according to a senior U.S. official. Now, one of the things that I've been saying quite a lot over the last two weeks is that actually one of the reasons, I think, behind the calmness, if you like, in reaction to the virus has been a, almost a de-escalation of potential confrontation of what has and is still one of the biggest risks to markets, which is the ongoing U.S.-China trade war. The thought being that because of the significant impact economically, the US might give China a little bit of breathing room about the exercising of the agreement for buying of large purchasing of agricultural goods as part of their upfront commitment in that trade deal. Now, here, I think this is a little bit more aggressive from the Americans. They're basically saying, we don't care. Even though you're having this problem with the virus, you need to now you know, back it up and fulfill your commitments as part of the agreement that you signed. And for me, that's that reignites perhaps then a little bit more pressure on the confrontation side. And for me, given where equities have been, and I think we are ripe for a bit of a pullback. And earlier this morning, I'm not so sure if you follow me on Twitter, it's my handle there, but I, you know, my, my view for today is it could get quite interesting and it's already kind of shaping up in that way. Certainly the US will really be when they come in, whether or not it does materialize. But could this be the straw that breaks the camel's back in a way that not just a little bit more change now towards the multiplication of other cases outside of mainland China, but with the US remaining pretty assertive, which I think is also a little bit of a shift in that uh, a different direction. Um, are we ripe for a bit of a, a, a pullback in equities? And, and already we can see we, we've seen some of that in Asia. The one thing then that this continues to represent is, you know, it's just such a, you know, in a medium term positioning, it's such a good asset to be exposed to. I mean, this again is what's really fueling this gold move is that, you know, the only way is kind of to become negative, if you like, with these news stories. Um, earning season has kind of passed, but, you know, wh whether it's all those things we talked about yesterday from uh, geopolitical tensions to the trade war to the virus, it's just a lot of risks, and particularly when an equity market is at all-time highs in those conditions, it is ripe for a bit of a pullback. And that, all of those metrics are just supportive for a further bid tone in that flight to quality move for gold. So, you know, could we see 1650 today? Sure, we could. You know, probability of that happening, I think, um, I'm going to say it's quite likely. Um, I wouldn't want to just sit here now and just want to hit the high here right on the R two because the moves already been fairly prevalent but I'd want to see really going into the US session when volumes pick up we go through the COMEX open how do equity markets behave um, today on on the NYSE I think it's going to be quite key on whether or not that materializes or not but yeah going into the end of the week just going to be interesting and, and obviously the data coming out um, over the course of um, the session is going to be quite key and that being then I mean this is gold um, the last time we had such a big blip in gold, you've got to go back to the Middle East and the Iran situation at the beginning of the year. Otherwise, we're heading for the biggest weekly gains in August of last year. Um, but the PMI data is going to be really key this morning, and I'll quickly shift over to that because you know manufacturing activity, particularly German in Europe, is going to be very important. Uh, why? Well, obviously, it's a, a real key component, not only for the German economy, but for the Eurozone's general performance overall. And how much has that you know, supply chain been impeded by the nature of uh, the virus? And we've seen this in, obviously, Chinese manufacturing activity. But how much is that v v uh, reverberating across all these other countries globally, particularly th those that are very much based on manufacturing exportation of their goods? So... The French number's coming up shortly. Uh, I'll probably cover that and hand over the SAM in the next minute or so. Um, so that's definitely going to keep an eye on the service number is expected at 51.3. The French manufacturing at 50 spot 7. So keep an eye on the Euro, Bund and, and the DAX. Uh, the German number at half past. Now the German figure, this is what it looked like last time. We actually were fairly robust, albeit still in heavy contraction as we have been for the last 11 months essentially. Uh, the reading actually pointed to the 13th straight month of contraction in the manufacturing sector um, for Germany last time out. But if you actually look at the numbers for the German figure, 
Manufacturing is expected to remain fairly suppressed, 44.8, a range of 43.8 to 46. The service number is still in expansion for the time being. That then leads us on into the, the UK figures. Um, we have had a really quite stellar performance, a lot of UK data on the back of the kind of election bounce, if you like. Manufacturing last time out came right on basically flatlining at 50. It was the strongest reading, reading though since last April. Um, and if you look at the service number, I mean, that was so impressive. The last reading in UK services PMI was the strongest pace of expansion since September of 2018. Uh, and obviously a lot of these were uh, kind of relief and the Boris bump on the majority conservative election we had at the end of last year. The question is, how sustainable is that really huge pop that we had last time? Uh, that was at 53 spot nine. The expectation for today is that that does tail off a little bit. But look at the range on the UK service PMI. It's, it's huge. If you're used to looking at these PMI data sets, that breadth of range is pretty big. 51.9 at the low to 56 on the high. Very rare that you see that type of uh, kind of distribution, if you like, in the, the surveyed estimates. Uh, we get the same from the US, and that's going to be key. Philly Fed obviously smashed it out park yesterday, but we're going to get the market manufacturing flash PMI of the US at 245. Uh, French number just coming out, so let me just keep an ear on that and see how this comes out. So let me just cover it with you guys now. Well, I'll put the scorecard. Services at 52 spot six, that's above the expected 51 spot three. And comes in at 51 spot nine, that's above the expected 51. So the kicker here is that manufacturing has slipped into contractionary territory at 49 spot seven, quite below the expected 50 spot seven. Yeah, so you can see the, the nature of the euro, quite jumpy there on that data, but the German number could, be, well, could well be the deal maker for some of the early morning direction. Uh, so on those numbers that have come out, you know, the manufacturing, as they said, contraction and a miss on expectations, 49.7. The service number, though, did beat expectations at 52.6. And remember, the French composition of their economy is not the German mold, if you like. So hence the reason why you've had this blip of volatility in the euro, but no committed move, because one offsets the other where it's a little bit more uniform in Germany, there's much more emphasis on manufacturing. So that figure coming out in about 14 minutes. All right, Sam, give you the nod now to come over. Um, the final part from me on the calendar that I just wanted to cover off was there's quite a few speakers today, all very much uh, centered around the Federal Reserve and all happening this afternoon. So here you can see Fed's cap plan, uh, and it's really kicking off after the open on the NYSE, Fed's Brainard, Fed's Clarida, Fed's Bostic, all speaking. So do make sure you have your calendars in front of you and you're aware of those, those speeches as well. Uh, and then finally, one thing to look out for, well, two things to look out for on the weekend. Um, the group of 20 finance ministers and central bank chiefs are meeting in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, starting tomorrow. And key on the agenda, of course, is what do they say about their thoughts on the impact of the coronavirus? at this point in time and what are their efforts both fiscally and monetarily to support the global economy and then second uh, keep an eye out for my macro menu i will tweet that from my twitter account on my handle below as per usual on sunday all right back by popular demand i'll hand you back to mr north and i wish you a good session ahead thanks very much let's just follow on from this data we we'll see it Hello and good morning, happy Friday. Uh, we'll have a, a quick look over uh, the markets. We're just seeing, I was just checking equities uh, globally at the moment and they're all coming to a, a level of support. How big that's going to be, I think time will, will tell. It's got a, got a feeling that this could be a, a decent day, opportunities uh, around, I'll bring up the, the Dow, which you can just see just coming down to 29,000 uh, on the futures. Just bring the pivots on as well. Uh, you've got the, the DAX as well, just found support. You can see right on one of those lows here. It's going to be relatively choppy, but the low that we had back on the 13th, just failed test of that, and you're getting a, a decent push already. Uh, I think to, to the upside, where could the, the next area of selling come in, or where would the bears want to defend? Really, the low that we broke through this morning, just above the S1, you can see basically yesterday's low. We found a bit of support initially, then came back through. I mean, yes, if I put this on the five minute, you can see we're just coming into an area now where 
there was uh, some lows. But you've got the data coming out um, all through uh, the next, well, 11 minutes and then 41 minutes away for the European ones. Whether you want to get too involved right here or not, I'm not too sure. I think probably better waiting for yesterday's lows. Uh, the S&P, you can see not the biggest move this morning, but uh, from the open still down 20 points or so, not far away from its low from yesterday as well. So stocks moving lower in Asian trade, but at uh, really their first areas of support now where you'd expect a bit of a bounce. And if uh, the selling is to continue, that's probably going to happen uh, a bit later on, maybe let this data to come out uh, as well. Euro stocks, similar to the DAX, keep an eye on yesterday's low. If we put this on the 15 minute, you can see just above that S1 would be the area where if I want to get short, that's where I'd, uh, where I'd look to, to get in from, from there. Uh, elsewhere, let's have a quick look over at gold. You can see just finding a bit of resistance around that, uh, that R2. Probably worth putting this on the weekly chart now. Uh, on the futures, Let's just drag that to the right hand side and you can start to see some of these levels that we of course haven't been at for, for quite some time now. 16.19 traded on the, on the futures on the weekly, it's a very key level. I'll just mark up just a bit above here, you've got the uh, lows from 2012 December 16.25. I know obviously on the, the futures you can see we're, we're through that, uh, but just on the weekly uh, on the 60 minute, I'll say we're through, but on the weekly, you can see there's quite a lot of resistance around here. So just be a bit careful. Maybe if I put it onto the daily chart, move it along. Yeah, it's going to be hard to really pick out these longer term levels. But on the weekly, um, you know, I'm just going to pop this into the chat just to say that we're not too far away from reaching up to to these points. 1700, of course, is is what's been talked about. You know, a lot uh, this week. Can we reach it? Uh, and it seems like it's on the way there. I think it's going to be an interesting Friday to see where, uh, you know, do people want to obviously carry any of this risk over onto the to the weekend, and it might help gold get that boost to 1650 and beyond today. But like Ant was saying, it's not a case of just getting ready to to, to click on buy uh, right now because, of course, it's on the R2. Its price, you know, could easily just drift a bit lower to be identifying different areas of support and different strategies to get in. Um, and you can see between, if you mark up the low, I mean the high of the day and then the previous high at 16.34, you there before now got a five buck range where you've got no interest in really getting into that trade uh, whatsoever. Moving over to the currencies, Euro is getting a bit of a spike on, on that data, of course, being uh, okay. Uh, the German number's coming out in eight minutes, so let's wait and see what happens there. The resistance level, Friday, uh, Thursday evening's high, just being tested around 108.80. Some nice opportunities to have got short yesterday on that R1, you can see drifted down, basically then all the way to the, that low of the day. What an area of support this point is around 108. Today, yesterday, um, Wednesday and Tuesday, it just can't get that daily close below. If we do, obviously just be aware of uh, the completion of, of Macron's gap. Uh, if you're bullish, I think you're really gonna wanna see price get above uh, the higher we had from yesterday because at the moment it's it's pretty range bound it's bang in the middle of that range at the moment i know yesterday we had a, a decent uh, spike higher in early trade once we broke out the the trend here uh, you can just see just roughly that trend there a little pop through came back into an area of resistance and then has drifted down uh, again probably would remove that trend channel now it's just got a bit too choppy so opportunity wise i'd be looking for obviously this data to to come out do its thing and then re reevaluate from there but i do like the idea of if we can come back up towards 108.31s for an area of short or really the continuation lower i know it's been a choppy area on those lows so i wouldn't have too many goes if, if it doesn't work but at the moment you would just say it's range bound over the last two complete trading days and then today as well so can we get that short higher up potentially looking for something like that but the data could obviously change things there the pound uh reaching let's put this on the daily uh another one of those lows it's been a topsy-turvy uh month or year should we say for for the pound you can see just been pushing high then coming lower then it's finally broken out this mini range and then we come down to test almost to the lows that we had back in November unbelievably uh, so a couple well, three days in a row to, to the downside I mean that is the 
the area of support where I think if we just mark this up as a bit of a zone, you're going to have a lot of potential buyers to come in on, on the, the idea that we're you know, quite a way off then the, the high that we had from last year. Brexit talks, obviously March may start to just weigh on things before then, uh, but that could be a good value area to look for those longs. Uh, up to towards you know the one sort of 33s 34 areas again that's sort of certainly an area where I would be looking at and if it does go below 128 and stays there well that idea is certainly wrong and, and we can look to, to drift down relatively quickly you would say to around 126 the next sort of key level so the pound not saying anything like that is going to happen today I think just the the little bounce we're, we're having here I think you've got the R1 which looks quite nice with all of yesterday's uh, highs as well I think that's a good area to, to look for a potential short uh, and above that I don't necessarily think we can get there but I'd like the look of a, a 129.60 to the downside the lows that we had not too long ago from the morning around sort of 128.90 was also the initial low at a similar time yesterday quite an important level line in the sand that if we were to get below there you may be a bit more comfortable about these uh, shorts coming in so just below the pivot I think you'd want to, to see cleared if we get on a trend line as well you can see that's more of an area now just from yesterday evening's low so below 128.90 I like the idea uh, of a short and, and the R1 I'll be looking for that as well of course if these euro numbers are fantastic it's going to drag the uh, this pair higher uh, as money comes out of the dollar probably albeit briefly oil yesterday let's put this on the 240 because uh, it's it's hit the target that the bulls would have would have wanted yesterday um, certainly medium term wise anyway you've got those highs that we had back from the 26th and 29th uh, helped let me just put those pivots on helped by you know a break above 52 50 uh, also 51 held as a good area of support but that's that push to that level now and and if we had these these virus fears really starting to pick up well uh, oil you would say has, has got to come down so I'm not completely confident I mean I was this time yesterday that we're going to go and go and, and 58 could come in and then suddenly the market got a bit spooked yesterday so if I'm looking to get long oil again you know I was I took took some off uh, just un well probably about by the time I got out around 54 14 would have been the equivalent on the futures uh, I'll be looking to see what happens around 52 63 as an area uh, but would I be buying today holding over the weekend probably not um, I think the the sentiment at the moment does seem a bit to the downside for, for riskier markets keep an eye on this trend line I don't necessarily think that goes today but the the bears would get excited and be looking for for shorts towards the low of the year if that was to go any questions as usual uh, please do let us know i think it could have the potential to be a relatively interesting day but uh, if this week has, has shown people anything it's uh, have your ideas and wait for them regardless if the market is is moving uh, in an, uh, an aggressive manner hope you'll have a, a good trading day uh, and an even better weekend ahead